Right, so here we are in Kent. Uh, the, ro the traffic you can hear is the A258, the Dover Road, and we're at the Ripple Down Environmental Centre. Uh, you can see the website there. Uh, Dave Jones. Hello, Dave. Hello there. He's going to give us a quick tour around the site. Excellent. Okay, it was uh, bought in 1976, turned into an environmental education centre in about 1977. Uh, went through the, the Ilia Trust, basically, or the Inland Education Authorities, and then became a, a, a charitable trust in 1993. Great. Let's have a quick look around. We incorporate lots of things such as dead hedging. We try to make sure that nothing leaves site. And when we had the chimney which had to come down for safety, we actually incorporated it in the bank, which is quite a bare area. And you can see the pots and everything are used as planters. So these are all uh, old bits of the chimney? That's the one, yeah. Great. This then brings you into the actual area itself. Uh, welcome to Ripple Down. That was done by Chris and myself. Uh, my son, who was about five at the time, so that's lasted a long time. Great. Right. Things last. And uh, the driveway, nothing gets wasted. When we had the telegraph pole taken down, we use it as an edging to make sure that cars come quite safely. Unfortunately, one of the areas which is the, probably the, the least good looking part of it is just to our right over here, which is our recycle area, or part of the recycle area. Right, and that's it. And this is where we get lots of things given to us or someone's throwing it away and we usually get them and we can incorporate them in some sense or some area. Right, so this is like people in the local area being waste products to you and you turn them into yeah, so add value again. Yeah, it's not so much that they bring them to us, it's stuff that I see them throwing away and I acquire. Right, okay. Which is, uh, which is oh, I'll have that. Exactly. Yeah. There's very little that I like to get rid of. There's also use for something yeah. um, in a lot of areas. It is part of the reuse side of it. I think that's something that people tend not to do so much these days. It's more of a throwaway area. Whereas I've found a lot of, um, lot of useful equipment in a lot of senses can be quite easily put into another use, which is better than the original use that it had, especially yeah. for wildlife and for the environment. Well, quite a lot of people forget that recycling is the third R. Exactly. After reducing your consumption and reusing everything you can. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> We also have topiary around, uh, we've just got over here, we've got uh, a peacock. Uh, Very nice. We've got a ram and so forth, but they're all around the ground. And they're just to try and add, not only a habitat area, um, something to give a bit of uh, colour to the area, but also a bit of a display, so that people realise that you don't just have to have a bush, you can actually make it look quite presentable as well. So even in your own garden, uh, working with nature is very, very important. Right, so this is the main building at Ripple Down House. And what happens here in the building, uh, Dave? Uh, well, it's mainly designed for children who come from, uh, mainly in London, I would say, 7% of the children that come down here. It's used as a, a group hostel, um, so we have groups that can book to come in. And uh, like I say, it's been here since 1977. It's now built up so much that we're actually taking 70 people. We've got 70 beds, so right. that, that that gives. And what sort of age range of kids come here? Usually primary school age, so between sort of seven and 11. But we do do secondary schools and we do um, community groups and so forth. It's uh, it's very much a community-based building in a lot of senses, which is really good. Great. Should we uh, have a look at the new store bay yes, structure? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah, one of the areas that we found was that while we've got groups in, uh, local community groups can't actually get together on a regular basis because of the, the, um, the groups being in and not wanting to mix adults and children at the same time. It meant that we were a little bit stuck for meeting rooms, seminar rooms and also an area where people could gather information. So uh, eight years ago we decided to, to look at a new building, a classroom, which replaced the porter cabins which we had originally, which weren't environmentally orientated at all. So eight years ago we decided to use the straw bell building construction uh, method in, in getting our new classroom area and tutor room. So we've got this, this building here which is nearly finished. Uh, we've just got phase three to go and then hopefully once, we, once that's completed we'll be able to use it exactly for what we want. Uh, which is uh, to make sure that the community has access at all times to sustainable development and information and groups within oh, projects in the area. All right, great. Can okay. we have a look at these vegetable gardens? Yes, can do. Five minutes and then we need to go. This again was an area which was, um, which was designed 
um, after the, uh, one of the, class, well, the classroom, the porter cabin outdoor classroom uh, went and rather than getting rid of the concrete structures which had been put in place we decided to make it into a raised uh, vegetable area. Uh, right, so these were the remains of the concrete structures that were here? Exactly. Great. And we've used dry stone walling which encourages habitats as well. Uh, habitats um, are being put in there to encourage good pests basically or, or pest reducers in a lot of senses. Um, we've got different sheds which have all arrived from different places, again from people who've, uh, who've got either donated them or wanted to get rid of them. Uh, we've got Pipe Henge over there which teaches the children and adults about the movement of uh, the sun mainly, uh, also to do with the, the stars, so astronomy and so right. forth. Right, so I, I thought it was a climbing frame, shows how much I know. Yeah, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people do, it's, uh, it's all designed like that. We've got our recycling area over the other side. But this area here is uh, a big open space. And for the children who haven't got much space and green space in London, uh, it works quite well. But even local children find it just as much. We try to keep, as m it, although it's, it, it looks unkempt at the moment, this is the time of year, but it is actually managed. Every area is managed for a different purpose. Over the far side, we can actually see the compost area. And uh, that's been designed even better now for, um, for teaching as well as just being a useful tool within the grounds themselves. The area we're now walking over is due to be uh, changed in the next few weeks and this will become a permaculture garden to encourage people to see how we can actually incorporate a small space into any area which will cover every aspect of the permaculture side of things that we try and cover. Right. Beyond the compost, just to our, just to our, our left, okay, is a wooded area which is going to turn into a forest garden. Okay, or a mini forest garden, just to show people how, how well that you can actually turn a wooded area into that area as well. Right, can we walk for, uh, through here? Yeah. Maybe have a quick look at the facilities inside. All materials on site have been reclaimed near enough to produce what we've got, so it takes a little bit of time to actually achieve what you want. Uh, the deck in here was donated by somebody who was going to throw it away. And the slabs over there, they were taken up uh, after the council had finished on the paving. So we're now starting to make it quite a difference just by using what people would call rubbish. Right. And I guess it might take longer, but it ends up being a lot cheaper. Exactly. Yes, a lot, a lot better. And it gives you a feel-good factor as well, because not only are you just saving money, but you're also keeping everything. This is one of our, our tutor rooms in a lot of senses. We've just run, or just finished literally minutes ago, uh, one of our permaculture uh, diploma courses and this is a group meeting where people who have been on the course, the introductory courses, have got together and we've actually been working together on how we can help each other and move projects forward within the local community and beyond. Um, it's really nice because you get a lot of people now who are involved in permaculture but really still feel quite isolated. I think uh, one of the things that this group's got we're going to do is show a way forward that you can together as a group we can actually make the difference. Excellent. Um, well, that's pretty much it, isn't it? I mean, you've got yeah. dorms and showers and toilets and all the not yes. usual stuff, but... Um, yeah, we've got room, we've got accommodation. Let's have a quick look at one room. All kitted out with beds and stuff. Very nice. And then we've got um, shower areas. Um, this isn't the main building, this is what we call the stables, and this was uh, changed over in this room here. It was a, a, a cloakroom area, so when people arrive, because of the nature of what we do within the environment, it's great to be able to put your wellies, any wet clothing and anything else in here, so that the house stays as, as clean and tight as possible, cutting down on any uh, cleaning materials that we, that we have to use and so forth. So in the main building, is that mostly dorms and teaching rooms? Yeah, dorms, teaching rooms and, um, and relaxation areas as well, because with a 24 hour stay here, it means then that people have got, got the, the access to um, being able to carry on even after the, the normal day has finished in their socialising, their getting together, partnerships and so forth. Great, well thanks very much Dave. I think we're heading off to Pine Calyx now. Excellent, but, uh, excellent. You'll enjoy that. Thanks for the that. quick tour. Excellent, no problem at all. Thank you.